Welcome to The Authority File, the podcast where you'll hear conversations with academic librarians, technologists, researchers, and authors whose work is laying the foundation for higher education's future. I'm Bill Mickey, your host and the editorial director at Choice. If you're new to The Authority File, you can listen to and find previous episodes on most of the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and on our website, choice360.org. We also encourage you to sign up for our monthly newsletter, The Authority File Roundup, which keeps you updated on previous, current, and upcoming Authority File episodes. You can subscribe at choice360.org by clicking on the newsletter banner at the top of the homepage. In this four-part series, which is provided with support from Sage Publishing, my guests and I take a close look at the undergraduate workflow, basically defined as a student's learning experience. As we do this, we'll pay particular attention to the ways in which the relationships between the library, teaching faculty, and students can be optimized for better learning outcomes. Joining me are Samantha Sharman, who is currently a student at the University of Lincoln, a public research university in Lincoln, England, Jamie Wood, professor of history and education at the University of Lincoln, Ian Snowley, Dean of Student Learning, Development, and University Librarian, also at the University of Lincoln, and Matt Hayes, Managing Director of Technology at Sage Publishing. In this third episode of our series, we look at the collaborative opportunities between librarians and faculty to help address a perceived student knowledge gap between receiving an assignment and then carrying it out. And so I wondered um, if we could talk a little bit about some of the, the collaborative opportunities between librarians and faculty to help address some of these issues. You know, Ian, sticking with you, I'm wondering if, if you could talk a little bit about, you know, where you see opportunities to work with, with academics and faculty um, to, to solve some of this. Absolutely. And in fact, I would say it, this is something of the holy grail for us, because yeah. the point you make about collaboration is really key. Uh, one of our challenges as librarians is often students see us as being outside their formal teaching. And, and mm. obviously that is technically true, but we really can provide a key sort of support in the, in both in terms of the teaching and the independent learning that they do. But they often don't see the the kind of the position of the library as that because we're separate from faculty. So where I see a huge opportunity is faculty bringing librarians into the design of their teaching and the design of their programs, because that allows us to, to really focus on where faculty can gain by having an extra pair of hands, as it were, uh, helping provide some of the student uh, development and support they need. But from our point of view, really being able to be seen by the students as something key to their formal learning. We talk, we've talk. we talked a bit already about the pressures that students face. Often, yeah. because of time crunch and the rest of it, they really see the bit the bit of the course that's formally taught, the bits that timetabled, as it were, that are, that are the ones they have to focus on. Uh, and if we can be part of that, then we can see a chance perhaps to get involved and get them engaged in, in learning outside the curriculum and uh, those things that aren't scheduled and aren't timetabled. And, and by working together, there's every chance that we can kind of share the load and create a kind of richer experience for students. So collaboration is, is really important for that. And then I think it really has to be right for the discipline, right for the time, right for the sort of program and where it's developing and the level of studies. And it may well sort of change over the course of a three-year degree. Um, mm. And it will vary between different disciplines, but it should be sort of, it should be tailored. I think that's really the point I want to make. It needs to fit what the academic is trying to achieve with their program and with the resources that the university is, is able to offer. Jamie, I'm very interested to hear what you think about that. Is that something, does that sound agreeable to you? <laughs> it sounds very agreeable. Yeah, it sounds okay. like, um, Good. yeah, it sounds like, um, like it's the, that's, that's definitely the ideal, I think. And the nearer we can get towards that, the, the better. Um, I think things like, um, you know, and, embedding as far as possible the library in things like like Ian was saying designing courses or, or modules within degree programs 
is much more preferable to the librarian maybe just coming in as a sort of outside presence at the start of a degree program and then you never see them again unless you have yeah. a problem or you you know that th the library isn't just um, a service that's kind of there either to remediate problems or to deal with super engaged students who would you know are kind of thriving anyway that they're they're, they're working across the the student body i think it is the ideal and the best way of doing that is to embed it within the program because that's the bit of the degree that um for better or worse that students kind of take most play most attention to mm -hmm. really um i think that's that's vital um yeah so i think i would just reiterate what ian said really that this is where i think i think it's it's key that they they come together right so uh, curious as well samantha i mean does that all make sense to you um that kind of integration i mean generally yeah as a student you don't really put two and two together very quickly about right. how everything operates at university yeah, until yeah. you like suddenly you're in third year and you realize oh that's that's what the library's for <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but unfortunately one of the experiences that's quite good about lincoln is um we often have like mentorship schemes where students will advise other students and such about you know where to go for help consistently throughout their three years of study um so you know there's a, a student approach towards helping the collaborative effort i suppose as well that could be adopted widely in terms of having student mentors right right yeah you make a good point I, you know i suppose it's kind of a little bit it's pretty far in the weeds what what jamie and ian were talking about and students aren't necessarily actively thinking about gee i wonder how my professor and, and the library could work more collaboratively it really would help me but um i mean i think if it was it sounds like if this was all sort of integrated into the system and was just kind of there in the background um that that would be pretty beneficial to the student i guess yeah absolutely yeah yeah matt i wanted to touch base with you any thoughts on what you're hearing here so far yes absolutely well, I'm conscious of going into the weeds, so apologies. <laughs> Hopefully this is not in, in the weeds, but I was interested in um, uh, Ian and Jamie's uh, back and forth on the library supporting faculty, because from our perspective, when we've looked at um, the evolving role of the library globally, because the library is so important to, you know, it's the kind of, it's the core customer for all our products. So we're constantly trying to see where the library is headed. And I think what's interesting there is that there are so many changes in terms of focusing away from being very collection centric and about building up the library as a as a holding place, either physically or digitally for content, and instead moving into this space of services to their users. Uh, mm. So there's that um, shift, which makes sense in the context of the move to open access where actually it's less relevant what the library is buying in and it's more about what's available openly but i think what's interesting in that is that the core mission and purpose of the library can stay as it's always been and actually a lot of the things that in was talking about about how the library could support faculty and undergraduates um, and other stakeholders in the university is core to its central purpose historically, which is really about helping the university facilitate the best learning and research experience. So I just find that interesting because it, it's basically about the library evolving in what it does and taking on new responsibilities as previous responsibilities become less relevant. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, Ian, I'm going to come back to you. I'm wondering if, it, and this might be just pretty speculative at this point. Um, but you know, how, how can librarians and teachers and, and Jamie, I'll, I'll ask you this as well. Um, you know, effectively divide those efforts that we we're just kind of describing, um, to support students and the learning process and their workflows, like how might that look in actual implementation or execution? No, no, absolutely. And I think it's, uh, it, it, again, it's this idea of genuine collaboration, which is people playing to their strengths and bringing, uh, to a, to a sort of setup. Uh, the particular abilities they have. Uh, here at Lincoln, we're just kind of working our way through a new strategy process. And as part of that, uh, we've just developed a teaching and learning strategy that's very skills focused. And we're going to really focus on 
the areas where the, the, the outcomes, the, the, what, what we expect our students to be able to do in terms of a range of skills. And we see that as a huge opportunity for the library because there are lots of skills that are kind of around the, the use of information and mm. around the kind of uh, uh, use of, of resources and materials that are actually incredibly important life skills. Uh, we kind of have talked, uh, quite, librarians have talked for many years about information literacy, and yeah. that, that, that can be a slightly misused concept because uh, nobody wants to be described as illiterate after all. Uh, and, and it has some connotations that are perhaps uh, overtaken by, by changes in society. But that idea of being fluent with information, being able to use information resources, really are key skills for life they are skills for the for for employment for the workplace uh, and i think it's those kind of areas that librarians can inject into the curriculum in a way that helps and supports the discipline specifics that academics and faculty bring uh, we're not expecting sort of to teach uh, specialist subjects we don't uh, we don't see our role as that but we can provide that kind of academic scaffolding if you will around how to use information uh, how to sort of navigate the academic world. I've, I've already mentioned plagiarism and referencing, and those are key areas uh, for being able to present yourself properly in, in an academic environment and to defend your ideas and show that you're you're doing original work. So those are mm -hmm. core concepts that we can bring to the party and that which that then support the specifics of the discipline that uh, that academics are providing. So I, I think there is that idea of of finding your strengths and uh, uh, and bringing them together to to really enhance the experience that you offer, and that should be enriching for everyone uh, because it uh, it hopefully spreads the burden and gives everybody uh, a bit more time to do all the things they they need to do in these busy times. Right, exactly. Um, and then and then Jamie, uh, what might that look like to you as a, as a as an academic in in practice? Yeah, I mean, I I really like the idea of yeah. of, of sort of division sort of I think there is an important idea of dividing responsibility um, but I think also we, we've talked about working together and so so working together about where that takes place and where that fits within a curriculum or a student a student's kind of journey through a, a degree I think is is imp is important too um, and and therefore sort of I, I think staff also need to take some responsibility for thinking about stuff like information literacy, because I think there is a sort of, or digital literacy or whatever other broader skills we want them to gain. It, I, I think, um, so, so a role for the library would be in helping staff to see how they can teach sort of the, di the, the, the very discipline specific version of what yeah. information or digital literacy might look like. Um, so I think there's a sort of like, a, a, I think there's a tendency from academics to look at it as to treat the library as too much like a service department is taking care of certain things mm. rather than a kind of a, a, a equal collaborator in figuring out how we can help the students better to to learn stuff and develop skills and develop knowledge and um, within their specific discipline that will help them to you know achieve whatever they want to achieve after after the after they finished with us. So I think that that's that's one one area I think that kind of you join these things together somehow in a in a kind of useful in, in a useful way um yeah that, that 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 would be my perspective i think yeah i'm curious how like and again this is kind of you know just hypothetical but i mean who administratively how how would faculty t you know academics and the library actually be made to come together to kind of accomplish these things like where would that have to come down from is it just a matter of uh you know the the library director or dean or you know just kind of coming together and implementing these types of plans or yeah i i think so i think it it, it i think it needs to happen at a well ian's the dean so you yeah. can ask him um, but i think <laughs> it does need to happen at a kind of institutional level if it's to right. be effective yeah we've got you know you can have really great partnerships going on at a local level that can achieve great things but that good practice, I think, needs to should be shared more broadly and wherever possible, and uh, sort of applied elsewhere. And obviously, mm. there are resource implications. Things take time to do. You have to kind of pick your pick your fights or pick the places where you can make a, a telling intervention. But 
Um, but yeah, I think I think it needs to be an institutional level thing rather than something that's that's bottom up in this case. Right, grassroots. Would you agree, Anne? Hey, absolutely, and that's why I think for us the the change of strategy is a really important uh, point because it allows us to to tie what we're doing to uh, effectively what the institution has set out as its plan for the next five years, and that that always carries a certain amount of weight. There are always, always strategy skeptics out there, but uh, you can generally win them over if it's a case of that's the way the institution is going. Uh, but I think it's also about the structures and the resources that you have. Uh, at Lincoln, we have a large team of uh, academic subject librarians, and that mm. gives us a sort of uh, a real opportunity because their job is to get out there amongst the faculty in their particular areas and work with them. And in fact, we we do definitely have the collaboration that I've talked about happening in some areas. And actually, Jamie is a good example of that in the, uh, in the School of History. But it isn't it isn't consistent, and that's the point that Jamie was making. If you rely on this happening at a grassroots level, it will always be patchy. I think mm. what we need is all of our students deserve the same level of support. They don't obviously have the same experience, but they have an experience that's equivalent and appropriate for what they're studying, and that really requires the institutional response that you've picked up on. So for us, the strategy is the key. We're at the start of the five years, so we'll have to see how we do, but. Uh, Uh, I think it provides us with a really important starting point. You just heard from Samantha Sharman, who is currently a student at the University of Lincoln, a public research university in Lincoln, England. Jamie Wood, professor of history and education at the University of Lincoln. Ian Snowley, dean of student learning development and university librarian at the University of Lincoln and Matt Hayes, Managing Director of Technology at Sage Publishing. This series is brought to you with support from Sage Publishing. Join us next week as we situate the librarian's involvement in the student and faculty workflow by looking at how these kinds of services align with what might be considered more traditional ones. We also take a closer look at the contributing factors of sluggish student engagement. But also there's the element of a lack of guidance. So again, it's quite basic in the fact that if students aren't directed at least a very little bit in what to do or how to approach their reading, if they're faced with a really long reading list and a lot of work to do, they will just quite often say, I am i don't know what to do, so I'm not going to do it, essentially. It can get overwhelming quite quickly for a lot of students. And that, that key phrase of um, overwhelming or confusion came up a lot in the survey responses and in the focus groups as well throughout the research so it's definitely a strong sentiment of not knowing what they need to do or how they need to do it and thus just backing away and saying not gonna not gonna approach that as always underwriting opportunities for the authority file podcast are directed by choices advertising manager pam marino and all of our episodes are produced and edited by choices digital media producer sabrina kofer with support from digital media assistant ashley roy that's all for this week thanks for joining us